In this video, we're going to talk about the arc length of a function. And here's what we're going to try to do. Uh, given a function f of x right here, uh, we're going to try to find its length from a particular starting point to uh, an ending point on a, a given interval that's provided to us. Okay, so um, here's, here's how we're going to make that happen. Um, here's our curve here again, and I'm going to jot down the formula and then I'll explain it to you. All right, uh, it's actually done by an integral, believe it or not. Now, if I write the integral from A to B, uh, and I stop right there, you, you would probably stop me and say, well, well, hang on, Devin, I thought definite integrals gave you area under a curve, not, not length of a curve, and that would be correct. So if I wrote integral uh, from A to B of f of x dx, yeah, you're right. This would not give us arc length, would it? This would give us the area under the curve from A to B. That's, and that's not what we're looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify this integrand. We're not going to put F. We're going to put something else uh, to make this be length of a curve rather than the area under the curve. And here's, here's the modified integrand. It's a big square root, big square root of 1 plus bracket F prime of x quantity squared dx okay so this is our new integrand where our curve here is f of x and so this is yes yeah, a formula that we that we unfortunately just have to kind of memorize um, there is a reason that this works um, it's a little beyond the scope of calc 1 uh, this is actually coming from if you're familiar with vectors this is actually coming from the norm of a, a particular vector the magnitude of a particular vector but that's a little beyond the scope of this class but in, in any case this does give you the length of this curve from a starting point uh, to an ending point point. Um, and notice here that this guy right here is the derivative of f not f of x squared right so uh, it's pretty plug and chug given a function and given an interval you do these things you plug it in you do the integration and out pops your answer uh, now there is a couple things that we need to uh, remember, so I, I jotted down a few quick notes. Um, here's two things in, in particular that are important to remember when you're doing an arc length problem. Uh, number one, f prime needs to be continuous. If the derivative is not a continuous function, then this whole process doesn't really work. Now, nine times out of ten, your derivative will be continuous, but it's just something that we need to say uh, just to make you aware of that. Uh, second thing, this integral right here uh, is sometimes very difficult to do because you'll notice uh, it does have composition. There, there's layers here in this integrand, which kind of hints at we might need u substitution to do this integral, but there's a problem with that. If you like, like we typically do, let the inside of the radical be the u, notice there's never going to be anything else out here to be your du. Okay, you'll never have anything else. So my point of that is U substitution often doesn't work. It seems like that would be the right thing to try, but it just doesn't work. So if you don't have any good integral technique to, to use, then you're forced to resort to a calculator. And now there are, there are ways to do definite integrals on, an, on, our cal, on a calculator. And we've got some videos on that that you're welcome to watch. But, um, but you know, just be aware that you possibly might not be able to do this definite integral by hand. But nevertheless, even if you use a calculator, the numerical value that you get is going to be the length of uh, your curve. So um, you can stay tuned for some uh, example videos on how this is used, and we'll actually work through a, a few examples coming up. 